What is thy bidding, my master? There is a great disturbance in the Force. I have felt it. A lot of new lore has been introduced to the Star Wars universe through the Acolyte TV show. And while opinions may vary, that of my own included, there are certain elements of canon we have to work with or at least work around to fit into our new narrative or headcanon itself. So for me, I've been wondering a lot recently about Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader and the prophecy of the Chosen One. And everyone, before we go any further, are you guys wondering about what's going to happen to Shin Hattie in the future? Well, if that's the case, definitely check out my latest Shin Hattie lore video, which talks about Shin Hattie's rebirth on Peridia. And I hope you guys enjoy that video as well as this one. Now back to today's video. During the Acolyte, the prophecy seemed to have changed a little bit, or at least it appears, as the showrunner sought to make Osha and Mei chosen ones as well, Force, Birth, Virgences. The idea definitely changes, at least a little bit, the established lore, particularly the lore mentioned in The Phantom Menace, about Anakin's own Force, Birth, and how it's a central element to his character and the prophecy itself. Vader once Anakin Skywalker was deeply immersed in Jedi teachings and prophecies. As a Jedi, Anakin learned about the Chosen One prophecy, which stated that a being born of the Force would bring balance by destroying the Sith. The prophecy is mentioned in the Phantom Menace and explored in various expanded universe sources like the Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith's novelization. Given Vader's ties to Emperor Palpatine, also known as Darth Sidious, he would have been exposed to extensive Sith knowledge, including dark rituals and a history of the Sith. That's evident from the Revenge of the Sith film, where Palpatine speaks of Darth Plagueis and his ability to manipulate life and death through the Force. Considering Osha and Mei were both Force virgin births and powerful in their own right, Vader would have likely had some strong opinions about them as he retroactively studied them, even if they were no longer alive at the time of his power. Given his knowledge of the Force and the prophecy surrounding the Chosen One, Vader would have viewed any other potential Chosen Ones with suspicion and maybe even disdain. Reflecting on his own experiences in prophecy, Vader may have seen Ocean May as failed experiments or lesser beings, particularly because they were created through dark magic rather than the will of the Force. That aligns with his views on Starkiller, whom he trained as a powerful apprentice but ultimately saw as expendable in the expanded universe. Vader's obsession with power and control would lead him to dismiss Ocean May as threats or rivals, especially since their legacy did not endure like his own. And Vader's interactions with Starkiller actually provide a clear example of his perception of powerful force users, who aren't a part of the established prophecy. Starkiller born Galen Merrick was taken as an apprentice by Vader and trained to be an instrument of his will. Despite Starkiller's impressive power, Vader viewed him primarily as a tool to further his own agenda. When Starkiller outlived his usefulness and became too powerful, Vader betrayed him without hesitation. So similarly, Vader may have seen Osha and Mei as potential assets to himself, or at least in his learning, and that they could be controlled and eventually discarded as needed but not Chosen One and not created by the Force itself. Starkiller's story, particularly as explored in The Force Unleashed, shows Vader's pragmatic approach to his power. Vader recognized Starkiller's potential and sought to mold him into a weapon to overthrow the Emperor. However, when Starkiller began to develop his own ambitions, Vader then saw this as a threat. Now that particularly mirrors how Vader may perceive Osha and Mei. If he could control them, they'd be useful. If not, they'd be threats to eliminate. Now again, this doesn't really pertain as much over here because Osha and Mei aren't alive at the time of Vader, but it gives insight at least into how Vader would perceive them and how he probably perceives them in a historical sense. So Vader's interactions also with Luke Skywalker would provide some more insight into how he would perceive other Force users, particularly that of this topic, Osha and Mei. He saw Luke as a tool to be manipulated or a potential ally against the Emperor. Vader could have speculated about Osha and Mei and how they could be used against the Emperor. However, in their death, Vader probably thought that Ocean May are, are more like false prophecies because, well, they died to begin with, so if they were truly powerful, they'd probably still be around, or at least have a more lasting impact. And clearly they didn't, right? Because Palpatine was trained by Plagueis, Plagueis overthrew Tenebris, and well, now we're here. So ultimately, Vader would probably see Ocean May as insignificant in the grand scheme of the Force, because their inability to fulfill any kind of prophecy or leave any kind of lasting impact, well, it just never happened. But here's another thing to consider. The Death of Miri Witches, also known as the Night Sisters, play significant roles in Star Wars, and they're depicted as powerful Force users who employ dark magic to achieve their ends, including the reanimation of the dead. So given Vader's involvement in the Clone Wars and his direct encounters with these witches, he would well be aware of their abilities and their connections to the dark side. So how does this tie into Darth Vader's thoughts on Ocean May? Well, it ties into his obsession with bringing back Padme to life, or preserving her life, as seen in the Revenge of the Sith and evidenced in many other facets of Star Wars lore. 
His interest aligns with witches' abilities to preserve and reanimate life, which is certainly evident. So assuming the premise that Ocean may or force virgin births, and wondering about how Vader speculated on them, it would be logical that Vader perceived them through his lens of understanding of the Force along with his understanding of magic. And this is another way Vader would see them differently. Ocean May come from dark magic. Anakin's birth comes through the will of the Force and was orchestrated by the Force itself, as implied in The Phantom Menace. And it's also implied in the Darth Plagueis novel, where the Force met Darth Plagueis' experiments on creating Force-rich life with Anakin Skywalker, right? Because Anakin was the Force's response, Plagueis' false deity of experiments to create life. This would also contribute to Vader's perception that Ocean and May were false and suspicious. A comparative difference that Vader would have noticed between himself and Ocean and May was how he was birthed. Ocean and May were birthed through the power of one, the power of two, and the power of many. That's literally chanted by the witches as they transform them. It's clear that this is central to the witches and how they created Ocean and May. Anakin's story, again, doesn't speak of the power of many, but the possibility that a force miracle would bring balance to a tumultuous situation. So what else would Vader think about these twins? Besides seeing them as lesser beings and products of dark magic rather than the will of the force, he would probably see them as pretenders of the chosen ones. So it's definitely interesting to speculate on how Vader would perceive other chosen ones and other force versions. Is. And in my opinion, he probably saw them as really not much to think about at all. The true power for Vader really lie with himself and Palpatine and perhaps the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise, as that was most relevant to his own cause. Definitely a speculative lore theory video here, but there's still things worth considering, as now Osha and May are cemented into the canon. What do you think Vader thought of Osha and May? Do you think he knew about them through his Sith studies, or were Osha and May just insignificant blips that were washed away with the history of the galaxy? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share this video, subscribe, and may the Force be with you, always.